Okay, Malachi, chapter 3. I have preached this verse before. I don't know when. I don't know when the evening. The title was The Tip of My Tongue. Uh, years gone by. Who knows? Anybody got that written in their Bible? The tip of my tongue? Malachi 3.16. You would turn there. This is a big burden in my heart. And it's something that I think that most all of us fail at. <clears throat> is, is it in? 2015. I preached it in May, two years ago. Does it say morning or evening? Yeah, it's probably evening, but if there's seven points there. Yeah, yeah seven S's. All right, we got uh, uh, eight W words on the same verse this morning. Now, I just, it, this is a burden on my heart. Uh, it's something that uh, I, I told Joe this morning that I was going to include his father in the sermon because this is something that personally happened between he and I uh, years ago and I thought I would bring it up and uh, because it is part of, of his life that had occurred. Our title today is Daddy's Diary. And uh, I think about those that uh, uh, we go through loved ones things when they, uh, after they die, and you find uh, different things. Now, when we read the verse, uh, I'll go ahead and begin by reading the verse. Listen, we don't have a lot of verses today, and I decided, uh, I'm preaching up to a certain point only with 11 verses. Sometimes we go anywhere from 50 to 100, 11 verses, then we'll have some more after. It's going to be a quick outline, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to be talking, preaching. And uh, I, I want conviction. Convict, the desire is for conviction, not uh, for a great sermon, but a convicting sermon is, is really more important than a great sermon. <clears throat> Verse 16, Malachi 3.16. I want, you're going to ask a question. And I want you to answer. I don't have commentaries on this particular verse. I have one, maybe two, that make a passing comment. And the one I don't agree with as to who, what is being addressed in the book that is recorded here. I do a sermon on the books. We draw on it, and uh, that's one of my pictures that I draw. We preach on the books, you know, beyond the book of life. Uh, look at verse 16. Let's uh, pray, and we're going to get started, Father, that you would just bless our time together in your word, that you would use it, Father, for your glory, your, for your honor, and that... Uh, Lord, there would be results and conviction as a result of this. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, verse 16, Malachi 3, verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord. Now, I brought this up to the wife today. She was serving me the coffee and the toast, Italian bread toasted. And I said, are they talking about what is recorded in the book? What's recorded? The names only of these people or their words? Now that's my question. Their names only or what they said or both. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Now what is being recorded? The person's name only is written in this book or the per person's name and what they thought and said of the Lord. Go ahead, you can shout out if you want. I don't care if you go to church here or not. What is recorded, the name only or the name and what they said? Or don't you know? You say both, their name is recorded and what they said is recorded. Now, listen, we got all eternity to read these books. What do you think is said? What's record, being recorded? 
Anybody else have a comment? Dana was brave enough to utter his voice. Anybody else? Don't know. Technically, the right answer is we don't know. We don't know. I, I think that's the right answer. The one commentary that makes actually a paragraph comment says it's the, it's the record of their name. But man, how it would ruin my sermon. <laughs> it would ruin the sermon if it's only the name. And uh, I, I think the Lord the Lord has the ability and the stenographers to record every word we say about him. Amen. This is a burden in my heart. Listen, we preach flowery things for Mother's Day and we preach negative things for Father's Day. And man, we got away from that. That's for traditional Baptist is exalt mother, put father down. You know, father's got enough problems, let alone getting put down on his day. So uh, this sermon would apply to anybody, fathers and mothers. I want you to really consider what you say each and every day, and especially about our Lord and Savior. Now, whether or not you agree with me or not, I do drive, and I didn't drive it yesterday, my 32 uh, DeSoto, a hot rod sedan. But I stickered on the back of that, Jesus saves. So wherever I go, they give me the thumbs up when I'm coming, and they give me the honking of the horn when they're following. And I don't think they mean for me to get out of the way, because it's got a big engine in there, and it can go pretty fast, and I'm pretty heavy with the foot. <laughs> but I stick her down there, Jesus saves. If I can't put Jesus saves on there, I'm not much of a preacher. But we need to do that. Daddy's Diary. I always wanted to write a book. Not just any book, and I still do. And we published a book back there that we got out of MCC and we published it back there. But I want to write my own book. But a book which can really help people. Not a book whose purpose is to bring in great revenue, which can be measured in dollars and cents, but a book which would bring about an everlasting reward. Not for me, the author, but others, the readers. I think in the... Uh, arena of faith that we have and you write a book your audience I think for the most part is about 600 nationwide that's going to buy that book I mean it's not like it's going to be a, a 1 million bestseller but this would help other people the readers happy Father's Day is the day which we have before us Father's Day just as with Mother's Day the desires to make it a happy day Today's sermon, entitled Daddy's Diary, is not just for fathers only, but for all saints. All saints need to hear and take heed today, for if what is preached today be practiced, not only preached, but practiced, it would be of such power as to move he who has been given all power in heaven and earth. Now it says in Matthew 28, that all power has been given him. But if we speak of him, it has the power to move him and record this in a book. Of what we say of Jesus has power enough to, to move Jesus. And a book would be authored by you who would dictate the book and our Lord would be its recorder to write such words in what is called the book of remembrance. According to Malachi 3.16, all that is said and thought of by us, not only said but thought of by us, of our Lord Jesus Christ is worthy of record. One need not worry of uh, misquotes, misspellings, misarrangements of thoughts, for our Lord is its writer and arranger. He's going to sort all that out and make sense out of that. So lately I have preached to convict all to faithfully come to the house of the Lord. Now I have preached on church attendance and attendance went down. I then preached again on church attendance for Wednesday night and it went to a record low. Right? I have preached to convict all to faithfully come to soul win for the Lord and organized soul winning. And we have gone from four soul winners 
to five soul winners. Now this past week to seven soul winners. And you know what? Some of those soul winners said they really had a good time. They look around for money and they say to the kids, first one that finds money, I'm going to buy you an ice cream cone. Now they already know I'm going to buy all of them an ice cream cone. But they find money and we went out and got an ice cream. But we went from four to five to seven soul winners. I mean, went in the right direction. And all to faithfully speak, today I am preaching to convict all of us here, one and all, to faithfully speak and think about our Lord Jesus Christ. Now what, what prompts me is one thing my son, one of my sons said to me is he has never heard a preacher ever talk about Jesus outside of the pulpit. I mean that is, that, that's a slap in the face, folks is we need to speak of Jesus wherever we go and think of Jesus. We have a, 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 an eight point outline and uh, we're not spending a lot of time on these points. We're just, we're just gonna go. I want this to be convicting. This verse begins with the wise. Then they that feared the Lord, you and I, we are the wise ones. If we are those that fear the Lord, all those who are born again believers of Jesus Christ are wise. Wise to see their need and wise enough to realize Christ can fill that need in the salvation of their souls. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm going fast on this. Begins with us who have, who have been wise. To know that we are sinners, that Jesus saves sinners, that we've trusted Jesus. Amen. Those are the wise ones. And then it goes to from the wise to the words that are spoken. Spake often one to another. Spake often one to another. The words that you and I use. Now when, when we first got saved, uh, we were in a, a Mennonite church and I, uh, there was a girl there, Norma Jean, Norma Jean Bender. In fact, uh, my one son back here, his middle name is uh, named after... Uh, Friends of there, his name was Everett. And I named to put his middle name in there, and I said, Norma Jean, how come you 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 always talk about the Lord, but nobody else here does? And I said to this privately when she was uh, eight eight point nine months uh, pregnant. We were down in uh, Hickory Holler, Hazard County, Kentucky, in the Hollers, and we were visiting. We had to make a run down there for the Mennonites and came back up. And I said, how, how come you're always uh, talking to the Lord, but nobody else is? I said this privately. My wife was there. And, and she said, well, in, in real southern drawl, well, don't you want to always talk about the one you love? I'll never forget her saying that. You always want to talk about the one you love. The words speak off from one to another. So when we had first gotten saved, we didn't really speak too much of the Lord. But when we got in that Bible Believers Baptist Church, man, we were learning so much Bible, uh, eating it up so fast, and we couldn't wait for Sunday night because we, we, we would gather after some Sunday evening service. We used to go to Bob Heavens where it was, when they said it was tiles of gold, just like heaven. We'd eat there and go to somebody's house and be talking about Jesus and the Bible all the time. So many words in the world, and for the most part, the words fall to the ground. As the Bible says, it just falls to the ground. All these words that are spoken, that, that go nowhere. Moms and dads, Father's Day, Mother's Day, just think of not only the, not the responsibility, but the privilege, the privilege of exalting Jesus before your children. And then the worth, the worth of this, doth not the ear try words, the Bible says, whether or not the words have worth. Spake often one to another of the world or the creator of this world. Spake often one to another, I'll say it again, of the world or do we speak of the creator of the world? No better to speak of than Christ himself has said, Paul, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Well, you may say, I'll run out of things to say. 
I mean, we could feel that way. We could run, now, now what do we say? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Jesus is Lord. You know, we can run out of things. But no, you won't. For there is no man able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Amen. The worth. Usually when something is worth something, there's weight to it. That's our fourth one. The weight. Speaking of Christ is speaking of weightier matters. Weightier matters. There's weight to it. The weight. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. These are not vain words. Words like this earth shall vain words have an end. Not vain words, but precious words. So words like that are like made out of gold, which filters to the bottom of him who pans for it. I've never panned for gold. You know, if you go out west, you can pan for gold. You could go to these old gold mines and you, you spend twenty dollars. They give you so much dirt, and you can pan for it. They keep the gold. They they keep the gold. They buy the gold that you get, and you can pan for your five dollars worth of gold, and they'll give you five for the twenty that you know. And you did all the work. You know that's how it works. But the weight of these words, we've got to realize that they are weighty. There's value. To these words. And then it goes to the witness. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. He is the one that's witnessing this. The Lord's voice can shake the earth. The Bible says that. Whose voice then shook the earth. I mean the Bible says that. Whose voice then shook the earth. And shall not our words shake our Lord when we speak of him and to him? As when Christ was asleep on a pillow and the disciples woke him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? See, the, the Lord hearkened and heard it. When he hears us speaking of him, it rouses him and it gets him, it gets him motivated to write these words down. And then there is the writing of it. You know, uh, we'll probably be speaking Hebrew in, in, in heaven. That's probably the perfect language. You know, I, I had a guy come in. We do work for a concrete company. We just make these signs. And they don't go to church. This guy said he studies the Hebrew. And, and he says he figures out the symbols. There, there's a, a symbol like this with a dot in it. And a symbol like this with a dot in it. You know, I paid attention to what he said. Anytime the symbol's like this, I forget what it, it means in Hebrew with a dot. And it points, he said, it, and the dot points, it's open this way. It's pointing back towards the Old Testament. And when the symbol's like this and the dot, it's always pointing towards the New Testament. He said he had all kinds of things like that, just with the, the, the formation of the letters. I thought, I thought that was cool. And I don't like the word cool. I thought that was really cool. The witness. The Lord's voice can shake the earth, whose voice can shake the earth. And shall not our words shake our Lord when we speak of him and to him? As when Christ was asleep on the pillow and the disciples woke him, Master cares thou not that we perish. And then there's the writing. And he's going to write these things down. Just like in the Hebrew. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And so we, we've got to believe what this book says. That it's going to be written down. This writing. You want to author a book? We all author this book. All saved people are authoring a book. You say, well, I'm, I'm really not a great writer. Well, if you just become a great speaker of Jesus, you'll become a great writer. A book is written before our Lord for us. And what is written? The recording of our names or the words which, which we said of our Lord in honoring him, in the reading of his word, and in the prayers lifted up to our Lord Jesus. All that stuff. Could every bit of that be recorded? The book we hold is not a book which contains the name of our Lord. It doesn't, con see, here's a book written. It does, just doesn't contain the, the, the names of our Lord, the different names that are uh, used, but, but it, it, it contains those of his exploits and the things that he did. This book is as the Chronicles, and I, and I, I, I preface this in Sunday school. So that we would get a double whammy of this for, for the adults here. So that we could get this uh, book of Esther. This book is as the Chronicles of King Ahasuerus.
King Ahasuerus, the lost man, and Mordecai, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was found written that Mordecai had told a big, big fana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains and keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. The two chamberlains, I liken them unto the world in the flesh. And Mordecai warns us of the world in the flesh to take us down. And Mordecai brings about, in the end, the death of Haman the devil. And as a result, doesn't Ahasuerus seek to exalt Mordecai? Isn't that what a lost man does that gets saved, supposed to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ? And that's what he did. He exalted the Lord Jesus Christ, Mordecai. And isn't that then our job? This book, the Bible, is not just the name of Christ, but an exaltation of Christ. So the book of remembrance, not just the names of the saints. Uh, if it's just the names of the saints, I mean, it just takes all the air out of this sermon. But the book of remembrance, not just the names of the saints, but, but how the saints exalted the name of Christ. Amen. Uh, and then it goes to the will. The will. And that thought upon his name. When you, you're driving around town, ladies, when you're cooking dinner or making beds, and, and there's nobody there, you know, uh, my wife says I talk to myself. I don't know what I'm saying, but I, I, you know, I, I hope it's about the Lord. But when you're driving around town, you see those white puffy clouds, or you, you see this and that. I mean, don't you think about the Lord? Just thinking about him, according to this, according to this verse, it is recorded. Your will, what you, what you do during the name, and that thought upon his name, the will, the heart, and the mind of man. Thou understandest my thought afar off. He is the greatest of all mind readers, amen. He's the only mind reader. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty lamb. Do you thirst for him? Think about him. Then it's recorded. You know, it, it's, it's not the manly thing to do to talk of Jesus and think of Jesus. It's the wimpy thing to do. Well, then I'll be a wimp for Jesus. You think about all the men that you have under you and all the people that you touch. Just think of the great influence you have. Our last one's not in the in the text. It's the wish. By the way, wish is a Bible word. That we, the wish is this, that we would speak often one to another of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. You say, well, you're already done. No, I'm only half done. We're just getting started. Get, get this outline out of the way. I have but used 11 verses today up to this point. And if I can get but you to exalt our Lord Jesus using 11 verses, may all my sermons contain so few. You know, we have this billboard over here that is a scrolling billboard. It, it's no little one. It's a big billboard. I actually get work at my company because of that billboard. And one of my customers, I went to church with him. He said, anybody that's willing to do that, if, if you ch it, and, and, and you're charging me more than if I went down the street, I'll pay more to have you do it than somebody else down the street. Could it be the billboard and the tracks that we have written be recorded in the Book of Remembrance? I preached and people responded. That is to writing a track. I preached one time. I remember I had the board set up here and I preached and I drew six type of tracks. I, I, I preached and I, and I drew the tracks and I gave the titles and, and people responded to that and those that never dreamed of writing a track started reading, uh, writing gospel tracks. So let me give you some new billboards. Oh, just some examples. Want to hear something unique? Said of Christ. Never man speak like this man. You know, quick and short to the point. Right, here's another one. Only Christ can forgive your sins. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Short and quick and to the point. Look! 
this way. I figured that was going to be, you know, somebody's not going to be looking here. So I could justify that. <laughs> That's the title on the billboard. Look this way. Hey, you, you, you. Yes, you. Look this way. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Short and simple to the point. How about this one? In the dark, get in the light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. <clears throat> Here's another one. What will never pass away? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Now listen, you can get your thumbs busy and get clicking, and there are, there's just oodles of cute sayings that we could put up there. But I'm more under conviction we need to put scriptures up there. Well, we can put a cute saying now and then, but let, let's get those. Uh, uh, brother called me the other day. Left the I got the message. I got the message. He said, what about these opioids? O opioids, you know, this drugs that are, I mean, we need to hop on that. We need to hop on that, that, that Christ can heal them. Uh, op opioids, dr uh, drugs, and addiction, you know, they addicted themselves to the ministry. You know, the Bible says that. Here's another one. You say, oh, these are too long. Are you, you know, we went up there the other day and we decided to the time, would they purposely scroll past ours in, in a shorter amount of time and keep others up there longer? So we decided to, you know, to kind of one, one thousand, two, and you know, do that. No, ours is up there just as long as anybody else. You know, why know why? Because our money, our money is just as green as the next guy. Amen. Here's one. Are you keeping God's commands? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You say that's a lot? Well, we can shorten it up. And still say King James. Speaking one to another of Christ can be a great comfort and encouragement. What was said of Barnabas, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Said of Titus, Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down comforteth us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. The same thing could be same, said of Epaphroditus, said of Aquila and Priscilla, said of Timothy and Erastus, amen, and said of so many saints, and may it be said of you also, amen. Here's one. Psalm 34, 3, let us exalt his name together. Psalm 99, 5, exalt ye the Lord our God. What is the job of the Holy Spirit? What is his job? His job is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, come on, let's figure this out. His job is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Who lives inside of you when you got saved? Doesn't Jesus live in there? Then our job, through the power of the, uh, of the Holy Spirit, is to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What could be more simple? The simplicity that is in Christ. He shall glorify me, and if it is the Holy Spirit we possess, or better yet, the Holy Spirit possesses us, let him have his will with, will with us. Not my will, but thine be done. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. There's another psalm. It is all we can give him, and the least we can give him. So let us pay our dues of thanksgiving. Speaking often one to another is an exhortation, a challenge which needs to be stirred up in the hearts of men. It is as if we have forgotten. It is as if we have forgotten the exhortation. Those that speak not are as if they have forgotten the Lord their God. Hey, these are all verses, folks. I'm just quoting them. It is as if we have forgotten the God that formed thee. One big blessing I had in recent years. Now, I did not speak at length to Mrs. Booth. You know, when, 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 when men and women get together, what happens? The women click up and talk about 
uh, apple pie and you know what women talk about. And then the men get together and the men talk about what men do, right? So I did not speak at length to Mrs. Foos, but in recent years, and we, we did not fellowship with the Fooses. You know, they lived on the far west side, we lived over here. They had come to service once, I invited them over to the house, so they came over to the house. I spent an afternoon with Joe's father, Brother Ed Foos. And after an afternoon of speaking one to another, we spent the whole afternoon speaking of the return of our Lord. And, and not what we find online or what we surmise, but what it says in this book. This book. Of the return of our Lord, he told me the blessing he received for it had been a long way, way too long since he was able to speak to someone else of the Lord Jesus Christ at length. See, he was hungry for that and was very edified. And we had a good time doing that. A good time. All of us here can be a comfort and an example to one another. Those that are within your care, I ask, how will you be remembered? Twill be Daddy's diary. Twill be Daddy's diary. Will you be remembered as one that feared the Lord and spake often of our Lord? If so, you will have two diaries. One for the memory of those left here, and one that is recorded, that is written down for the re reading of it in eternity. Amen. Are we done? Hey, lads. We're near the end. I always wanted to write a book. Not just any book, but a book which can really help people. See, we have failed at that. When we say we, you know, I always say that's the only French word my wife knows. We are going to do this, whatever, paint the house. We, we, yeah, we, we. But when we say we have failed at this, I'm including me. We have failed at this. Not a book whose purpose is to bring in great revenue, which can be measured in dollars and cents, but a book which would bring about an everlasting reward, not for me, the author, but others, the readers. See, this needs to be incorporated in part of our life so that we don't have to think about it. We just do it. Amen? Am I asking too much? Happy Father's Day. Just as with Mother's Day, the desires to make it a happy day. <coughs> so lately I have preached to convict all to faithfully come to God's house. Lately I have preached to convict all to faithfully come to organize soul winning. But today, brothers and sisters, I have preached to convict all to faithfully speak and think about our Lord Jesus Christ. Daddy's diary. Is it just a record of the names or also a record of what was said? And they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Daddy's diary. May it be as precious to those about you as it is to our Lord. Best regards in Jesus Christ. Father, this morning, that your word would take root in our hearts, that we would express what Jesus has done for us and praise his name before other men. And Father, bless the hands that prepared this meal, all that are partakers in it now, Father. And may, uh, Lord, you just look down upon your saints and use them as you would see fit. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Shake hands before eating.